assalamu alaikum my name is dr rabia sajad from anatomy department sahara medical college today the topic of discussion is the general features of femur the main objectives are to identify the important features of femur to side determine the bone and uh, determine the anatomical position of this bone hip bone is connected to the thigh bone which is known as femur femur is the largest and strongest bone of a human its length is approximately 1/4 of the length of total height of that person so it is also the most important bone uh, transmitting the half of the human weight now femur is attached on its upper end through hip joint to the hip bone and at its lower end at knee joint it is attached to the leg bones which are tibia and fibula and as uh, per general anatomy classification the femur is classified as a long bone so it has two ends and a shaft further we will discuss each part separately now we discuss the detailed features of upper end of um, femur the upper end of femur consists of head which is the rounded part and then the constricted part trapezoidal in shape is the neck of femur then we have two elevations the larger lateral one is called greater trochanter and the smaller posterior inferior one is called lesser trochanter and then the junction of upper end with the shaft is marked anteriorly by intertrochanteric line and posteriorly by intertrochanteric crest <coughs> first of all head of the femur is more than 2/3 of a sphere so we can see that it is larger uh, and um, more spherical than the head of humerus as which is the homologous bone of uh, femur <coughs> the head is completely covered by um, articular cartilage at, as seen in the above small diagram but um, there is a central part just below the center there is a depression called fovea fovea is a pit which is going to give attachment to ligament of the head of femur on the opposite side the ligament is going to be attached on the acetabular fossa which was the non articular part of acetabulum below the lunate surface <laughs> now the neck of the femur is trapezoidal so it has an upper free border lower free border the medial side is the attached part of head of femur and the lateral side is attached anteriorly on um, intertrochanteric line and posteriorly on intertrochanteric ridge the intertrochanteric line is the anterior less prominent uh, uh, ridge which is marking the anterior junction of neck with the shaft of femur and it is basically intracapsular while posterior intertrochanteric is going to mark the junction of neck with the uh, shaft posteriorly and it is not intracapsular the capsule is attached as you can see by the green line beyond or proximal to the intertrochanteric crest on the intertrochanteric crest you can see a small elevation called quadrate tubercle as a strong quadrate quadrate muscle is attached to it which we will discuss in the uh, attachments now the two elevations the larger elevation is called greater trochanter and the small conical elevation which is uh, pointed posterior inferiorly is called lesser trochanter and they have important muscle attachments which we are going to uh, discuss later it can be clearly seen that the head and the uh, neck of the femur are not in line with the shaft the upper end of femur is bent as compared to the line of shaft and this bending can be measured as angle of inclination which will be discussed later in this lecture and also this um, upper end is also making an angle with the lower end uh, which we will discuss later which is called angle of torsion the lower end of the femur as you can see is identified by 
two rounded structures called the two condyles of femur the medial uh, medial condyle and the lateral condyle you can see that uh, there is uh, there are two important parts of these condyles the articular part and the non articular part articular part uh, you can see that anteriorly uh, this articular Uh, this articular part is more pronounced on the lateral condyle rather than the medial one and it is called patellar surface at, as the patella is going to be attached here then uh, inferiorly and posteriorly the articular part is going to be attached with the tibia and all of this articulation is part of knee joint anteriorly the two condyles are connected and posteriorly you can see the two uh, articular surfaces and the two condyles are separated by this intercondylar fossa or intercondylar notch and the intercondylar fossa uh, is joined to the shaft by the intercondylar line and uh, other than that on the lateral side of the lateral condyle there is a prominence called lateral epicondyle and on the medial side of the medial condyle there is a prominence called medial epicondyle just posterior superior to the medial epicondyle is an elevation which is called adductor tubercle and it is an important landmark as adductor magnus is going to be attached to it and we'll see it later okay, its importance is there the central cylindrical part of femur is called the shaft the shaft of femur is narrow in the middle and expanded going above and below where it is going to join the upper and lower ends in the middle you can see on the posterior view that there is a ridge like uh, prominent border called linea aspera which has two lips in the middle of the shaft the two lips of linea aspera are close together so uh, and uh, going above and below these two lips are going to divert so in the middle one third the shaft of femur has only uh, three borders and three surfaces the two borders highlighted by the green arrow and the orange arrow are the orange one is the medial border while the green one is a lateral border and then the posterior border which is linea aspera which is having a medial and lateral lip seen in the diagram and uh, the surfaces of the shaft are the anterior surface which is present uh, and seen on the anterior view while on the posterior view you can see on both sides of linea aspera there is medial surface and lateral surface in the upper part the two lips of uh, linea aspera they diverge you can see in the diagram labeled as medial lip and lateral lip so we have a fourth surface posterior surface also the medial lip of linea aspera is going to be called the spiral line here in the upper part and the lateral lip is present with uh, a, an important uh, roughening called gluteal tuberosity below you can see close to the lower end the two lips of linea aspera again they separate and they enclose another posterior surface extra surface which is here called popliteal surface that is as it is going to be a part of popliteal fossa a depression behind the back of knee and the two lips of linea aspera here on the medial side are going to form the medial supracondylar line and on the lateral side they are going to form the lateral supracondylar line here we can also do side determination and anatomical position of this bone the rounded head of femur comes in the upper end so it has to be in the upper part and the condylar part is the lower end then we can see that linea aspera the prominent posterior ridge border is pointed posteriorly and the lesser trochanter is also posterior inferiorly so placing the bone horizontal on a horizontal surface with the head directed medially backwards and uh, upwards then uh, this uh, is the anatomical position and side determination of the femur in this diagram we can see that the femur is of right side
in this slide we can discuss the angle of inclination as we can see that the upper end of femur is not in line with the shaft the head and neck are bent and the long axis of shaft is uh, making an angle with the long axis of head and neck this angle is called angle of inclination it is an obtuse angle and um, um, and due to this angle you can see that the upper part of the thigh is separated to adjust the pelvis while in the lower part the thigh is approximated at knee joint and uh, this angle is more prom prominent or um, you can say uh, decreased in female because they have wider pelvis the important thing to remember is that the, normally this angle is from 115 to 140 degrees. Uh, average is 127 de degrees. Uh, it's lower uh, in the female as compared to male of the same age. This slide shows that the angle of inclination in early age is uh, greater, that is it is more obtuse and with the passing age and growing age the angle decreases or becomes acuter. Now you can see in adults it is average 126 while in children it is average 135 while in old age it is coming towards 120. In this slide, you can see that uh, in dotted line is seen in the transverse axis of the femoral condyles or the lower end of femur, while the continuous red line shows the transverse axis of um, head and neck. Now you can see that the head and neck are not in line with the lower end, they are bent forwards or they are more bent towards the anterior surface which you can see by identifying the patellar surface and this bending as compared to the lower end is also called angle of torsion. The femoral angle of torsion is uh, average, uh, an average person is 12 degrees and in males it is more towards uh, 7 degrees and in female it is greater the bending is greater as um, there is a wider pelvis to adjust both of these angles the angle of inclination and the angle of femoral torsion are there so that they can enhance the rotatory movement by slightly bending the lower end or the upper end there is increased rotation on the opposite end so the rotatory movement of uh, the female are um, enhanced by these angles. This ends with the general features of femur and um, to get a better um, view you, can, you should visit the following website and uh, the following link and the YouTube so that you can have a better understanding of the features and uh, after listening to this lecture you should also uh, watch the video available on YouTube. Thank you.